if your hobby space, craft room, or home office has gotten so cluttered that you can't stand to open the door, this episode is for you. I'm going to take you along as I clean and organize my craft room and office, and I'm going to show you my favorite tips and hacks on how to do it all on an extreme budget. Let's go. If you love to live an upscale lifestyle on a downsized budget, I have got you covered today at Skip to My Life. One of the biggest problems in my small space craft room slash office was finding storage space. Now I am so over having my counters cluttered with little items, so I decided to build up and use some of my empty wall space with this little tip and hack that I got from a Pinterest designer. Now you'll wanna start with six drying racks from Dollar Tree and then you can use whatever formation of items you like for your organizing wall. I used three of the tin cups, I used two of the hangers, two of the wire baskets, and then also this paper caddy that I purchased from Target. I wanted to make sure that the system would not be flimsy or fall apart, so I was pretty generous with my zip ties, and I anchored them all to each other really securely. Now, if you live in a small space, the beauty of this is it can be taken down and folded up for storage, or it's also renter friendly. I got these ideas from this Pinterest creator, and I suggest her site. She's got some wonderful uh, organizational and design ideas. Next, I'm measuring exactly where I wanna anchor this to the wall with my level, and I'm using these monkey hooks. Now, these are very renter friendly. If you cannot drill into a wall or you cannot anchor into a wall, I've used these over and over again. All you do is push them just with someone with normal upper body strength can do this, and it actually provides an anchor hook behind that drywall. It will hold a significant amount of weight. So I am using three of those at the top of this drying rack. If you're new to Skip to My Life, a great big virtual welcome. I am so glad we found each other today. Now I'm attaching the hooks with the zip ties across the top. And to do that, I'll be pulling these drying racks up from the wall. And so you don't wanna anchor all four corners until you're completely finished. Next, I'm taking three wire pencil cups from Dollar Tree, and it's really easy to make little holes at the top and bottom of these to anchor them to the drying rack. This metal piece is really thin, and you can easily cut it with wire cutters. So I'm cutting two holes at the bottom, one hole at the, at the top, and this way I can thread through my zip ties. Now Dollar Tree has just come out with a really fun pegboard system, which is a similar concept to what I'm doing here, but I really wanted a larger area. So I knew that this would be much more cost effective. And frankly, I think that it's a little bit sturdier because it's based on metal versus plastic. But I did want you to know that that is an option for you out there. Dollar Tree now has a pegboard system. It's much more reasonable than what you'll find at the organizing stores. So this room I call my studio because I use it to create all of my DIY videos for you, as well as my office space for my business. And it's just a spare bedroom. We have a three bedroom rental. It's 1100 square foot. So really every inch has to do its job. And I just felt like I was not using this space as efficiently as I could. I purchased this paper organizing tray from Target and I just drilled three holes at the top of the plastic and with that I'm going to secure it to the wall. Now I do want to say that this system is not sturdy enough to hold a lot of weight. So the items that I am storing here are things that I feel like I'm going to use more if I can see them and reach them. I had put most of this stuff in drawers and it took up horizontal space and it also just wasn't easy for me to find. So I am over the top thrilled about how this turned out. 
Once you have all these components attached where you want them, then you can go ahead and anchor the remaining two corners of those drying racks to the wall. And this is my finished project. I have a little bit of space there that I may go ahead and add some things to, but for now it works really well. Well, it's about to get real, guys, because I'm going to show you what this room looked like before I got started with my organizing project. I have been on a frenzy of creating videos for you all, which is so much fun, but it had left me with this tornado in this room. And on top of that, the last time I organized this room, we did not have a puppy. We now have a puppy. And every time I'm in this room, she follows me in and looks for things that she can pull down from the shelves and chew on. And so her name is Bella. She's adorable, but she is a little bit of a troublemaker. And Bella wanted to give a shout out to Satchel, one of my viewers, long hair Doxy. Uh, if you have a fur baby and you want me to give them a shout out, please comment below and leave me their name. Now, as you can see, I had organizational systems in place, but obviously they were not working. And I think part of this is because it takes a lot of time to organize a space. So if we don't put that time in at the beginning and put systems in place that really work versus systems that might just look pretty or be trendy, it's gonna inevitably end up messy again. My husband and I made this craft table from my mother's old kitchen table and I'm gonna link below to the video of how we did that. I'm using a tool my son made in shop class, but you could use a spatula. I'm just getting off all that residue of paint and craft glue and I am polishing it with old English polish that smells wonderful. If you're returning to my channel, I want to say a great big welcome back. You all mean the world to me. I love your comments. I've been receiving a lot of comments lately and it makes my heart so happy. So I try to respond to every single one of you and I am so glad we are forming this group to encourage each other and give each other a little light in our lives. After I cleared absolutely everything off the floor, I sprinkled some baking soda freshener on the carpet and then vacuumed that up. I took my time, I went around the edges and baseboards and got everything exactly as I wanted it. If you've been watching Skip to My Life for a while, you've seen this little shelf before. I actually rescued it from the curb on trash day. I painted it white and mounted it over this bookshelf. Now, I have used it for paint and things like that for a while, but the system just was not working for me anymore. So I decided to start all over again. I wiped down all these shelves and I use this area to hold all different colors, pens and pencils, but I actually went through every single one. I threw out about half of them because they no longer worked. So I just encourage you, even if you don't have time to do a project like this all at once carve out maybe an hour a day over a week and really go through your things and make sure that what you have works and it still works for you i developed a system color-coded system for all my little nicky knackies that i use in crafting and i absolutely love it it makes me so happy to look at the shelf now Not only does this room serve as a creative space for me, but it also needs to work for my business. So I found these beautiful papers at Dollar Tree and I chose one of them to cover my file box. Sometimes it literally pays to clean your spaces. While I was straightening everything, I actually found 15 unopened Dollar Tree items that I was no longer using and wasn't going to use. And I was able to take them to the store and exchange them for 15 sheets of this peel and stick wallpaper. Well, if you have a home office, you know that Filing is a necessary evil. I do not enjoy filing. I don't know anyone who does, but it's one of those things that just has to be done. And I found that because the appearance of this little file box was so cluttered, I just avoided like the plague doing any of my filing. So I came up with this idea of covering it with this peel and stick wallpaper, and it makes the whole thing for some reason just so much more appealing to me to go ahead and get that part of my work done. Done. 
For the finishing touch, I spray painted that black lid white. And now the file box looks really appealing because it just blends in with the rest of the room. you have trouble parting with your much loved items, don't forget to donate some things and think of it as encouraging someone else along their journey of crafting. I have a nice size closet to keep my craft items in, but I really was not using the backs of the doors to help me out with storage. So I purchased this really inexpensive over the door shoe rack from Walmart. My husband and I recently downsized from a six bedroom McMansion to a tiny three bedroom love cottage once our kids were grown and flown. And when we first moved to this home, we pictured this bedroom was gonna be for our kids when they came to visit. And over time, their situations have changed, our situation has changed, and we just decided to turn this room into a studio for me. And then when our kids come, we can easily pull out a bed for them. These two bookshelves that you see in my studio space are ones that we have had in our family for probably 15 years. We purchased them unfinished for our children's bedrooms and since then I have painted them white and they have done a really good job for us but the tops of these bookshelves were looking a little worse for wear. So I decided to take that peel and stick wallpaper and cover the tops of both of those white bookshelves. I was so happy with the clean look I ended up with. I also wanted to show you this cute little lamp that I purchased at a thrift store. And sometimes I will leave my tags on items like this because it just makes me happy that I found exactly what I wanted for such a great price. Now, tell me if you think that's crazy. I'm a big thrift store shopper and every once in a while I come across an item like this that is priced so well. It just makes me happy to feel like I got such a great bargain. Well, this top shelf is really cute to look at, but it is not at all sturdy and could not be moved. So I had to cut this second project to fit and leave that top bookshelf in place. I just wanted to show you how I did this with an X-Acto knife in case you have a similar situation. I could not be happier with this peel and stick wallpaper and I am looking for more things that I can cover with it. The patterns were so vivid and beautiful. I hope no matter what your living situation is that you carve out a small space for yourself and for your hobby or exercise whatever it is that renews your spirit and makes you feel filled up so comment below and let me know if you have any kind of space in your house for a hobby or crafting or whatever it is i've struggled with how to store these odd shaped signs from Dollar Tree. I do use them a lot, but I came up with this little magazine storage trick. I'm using it to store my tissue paper and then all the different wooden signs and I can see it really clearly. As well as these gift bags, I just hammered a little nail in the wall and used that side space to hold these bags. Now, if I can see it, I can usually find it and use it. I'm also using these plate racks from Dollar Tree to store my pool noodles for crafting, as well as a small trash can for the odds and ends of those pool noodles and also for wrapping paper. You know what, you deserve a space where you can go and be renewed and energized and filled up. And I really hope that this episode encouraged you and motivated you to put a little bit of time and energy into creating a space you love to spend time in.
you're needing even more small space tips and hacks, click on the link I have provided for even more great budget-friendly organization ideas. Until we see each other next time, don't forget, my friend, today is not the end of your story, so keep going. This is Shannon from Skip to My Life.